Welcome everyone to today's webinar. What do you mean by balance sheet? Why is it important to understand and how does cutoff affect it? I'm your host, Linda Carrington, and we have our managing director with us today, Graham Potts. He's going to be explaining what's in a balance sheet and explore how getting cut off wrong can seriously distort your figures, especially profits and losses. Um, we'll take questions as we go today, um, so pop them in the comments on LinkedIn. Um, Graham, what is a balance sheet and why is it so crucial for business owners? Yeah, thanks, Linda, and welcome, everybody. A balance sheet is a financial statement that offers a snapshot of a business's financial position at a specific point in time. Mm -hmm. This is usually um, at the end of a month, a quarter, or, you know, as most people would have known, at a year end. Um, it's essential for business owners because it, it shows the company's assets, liabilities, and that should equal equity, providing mm -hmm. a, a basic a com comprehensive view of the financial health of that business. Uh, and what's more, it's used by other outside influencers or, you know, like funders, or if you went for um, share, um, shareholding, you know, sort of equity capital. Um, and it's the it, they consider it from the risk of lending to you. So like for a funder, it may mean that they do lend or they don't lend, but also the amount of interest that they might charge you. Yeah. OK. And can you um, can you tell us what the key components of a balance sheet are briefly? Yeah, certainly. Um, a standard balance sheet has three primary sections. It's got assets, which is what the business owns. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and those assets are split into fixed assets and current assets. So things you own would be like a car or a property. Uh, who owes you would be things like, you know, debtors, people that you've given trade credit to. Then it, you take off the liabilities, which is what um, people owe you, like trade creditors. Mm -hmm. um, or sorry, what you owe people, sorry, get around the right way. Um, or taxes and things like that. And that should equal what's called your net assets. And mm -hmm. the reason it's called a balance sheet, because that should balance your equity in the business, which is made up generally of share capital, what shares you've had, and also your retained profits uh, net of corporation tax. OK, so how, how do business owners use a balance sheet to their advantage? Um, basically, the, it helps businesses assess the current the company's financial uh, stability. Mm -hmm. So you can calculate the net worth, evaluate whether the business is solvent, and de determine what profits are available for a shareholder's div dividend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and what's the what's the um, significance of understanding um, the relationship between assets, liabilities, and equity? Um, understanding this this is really this relationship is crucial because it reviews how it sort of basically shows, reveals how the, uh, well, I can't say it, the business is funded. Mm -hmm. So like I said before, assets less liabilities should always equal the sum of the share capital and total profits that you have retained in the business. That's after corporation tax and dividends. Mm -hmm. that, like I said, that's why it's called a balance sheet. But having it regular updated and checked ensures you know the business worth and whether you have any issues, and we'll go through that a little bit more in a, a second. And what, what's when you talk about any issues, what kind of issues might people um, be able to pick up from the balance sheet? Well, I, I basically, you know, you should really look at the balance sheet against previous months, quarters, mm -hmm. or years mm -hmm. um, to spot trends. You can spot trends. So, say for instance, um, maybe your turnover is level, but your stock and work in progress is increasing mm -hmm. um, or the pe people that owe you money is increasing, the age receivables. If they're you know, rising, but your turnover is the same, then you know you've probably got a problem. Is there, you know, is there something wrong with this? Have you got slow moving stock? Have you got debtors? Why are they taking longer to pay? Um, also knowing what your liabilities are to pay because, you know, you may think, you know, I've got £100,000 in the bank. Mm -hmm. Happy days. But if you suddenly realise you've suddenly got you've got a massive VAT bill, you know, corporation tax bill, you know, sort of, and these bills are coming up, then basically you realise, hang on a minute, I haven't got that cash to spend on, you know, sort of a dividend or you know, buying a car or whatever. Yeah. So 
regular review and understanding can help you identify potential issues and also helps you understanding where you are at the point in time because businesses a lot of business owners think about cash but they don't understand the profit and how the profit links to cash which we're going to talk about in a future linkedin live but by understanding this sort of thing it means you can identify potential issues and you don't get nasty surprises right like now that's got to be dealt with straight away you can take action you've got time to think about it um and you've got that time to take action to maintain the financial health of the business yeah now the other um thing that we talked about in, it's in the name of today's session is cut off so um what is cut off what does it mean in the context of financial statements and, and why is it important for business owners yeah a lot of people don't understand cut off um, and it's one of the hardest things for a lot of accountants to deal with in business yeah. because sometimes you can have numerous problems with cut off. Um, cut off refers to getting refers to a specific date which the financial um, statements are you know sort of prepared to and that all the transactions have gone through. Mm -hmm. So this date is vital because it ensures that everything's been accounted for in the right um, period mm -hmm. um, because it's not cash it's all about matching the work that's been done in the right period with the cost to that work and if you get this cut off right it shows it can give you so much better information I've been into businesses where the cut off is not right um, and it's just all over the place and they can't tell you you know it what happens is your profit and loss goes up like a yo-yo yeah. because they've not matched it to the right period. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really what, what I was going to say is how yeah, how how does the the cut off um what happens if you get it wrong I suppose. Well, if you get it wrong, you know, it leads to inaccuracies in the balance sheet. Yeah. But it also leads to inaccuracies in the profit and loss account. Yeah. Um, you know, so it affects the, you know, anybody looking at it, including I'm looking from a business owner's point of view. It, mm -hmm. You know, they may think they're doing well when they're not. They may think they're doing badly when they're doing well. You know, I've heard of lots of people that don't know how to account for so many different things. You know, have they got all the stock in the business? That's number one. You know, what happens? You know, they've got work in pro. So they've they've basically um, started doing working on something, say like man manufacturing. They manufacture mm -hmm. something, but they haven't invoiced. But they've got lots of costs against it. So if they haven't put in a figure for work in progress, which is work done that you've not invoiced yet, then you're going to get the wrong position. Mm -hmm. So if, for instance, you've done work in, say, September, and you don't invoice it until October, but your year ends September, you know, you'll work, you're basically you'll be saying, oh, I haven't done so well this year. Well, it'll come into the year after. Yeah. Um, a similar one is like, say, something like deposits received. When you receive a deposit, you know, you get the cash, happy, you know, that's great. But yep. you haven't done the work. So if you got, say, a quarter of a million of deposits by the end of the financial year, but you haven't done any work yet, then you're going to make a massive profit that year. But the next year, you might make a loss if you, say, at the year end, got no uh, deposits. So it really is something that has to be, you know, looked at and getting the right cutoff, you know, between, you know, sort of the, the costs and making sure you've got all the invoices in. And if you haven't got the invoices, you've put what's called accruals for the invoices that aren't, haven't been raised yet. It sounds, uh, from my perspective, you can end up with a sort of uh, spikes in your accounts um, where actually if you get cut off right, you would see the real trends in the business. That's right. Yeah, I've seen it where, you know, one month or one quarter – you know, a business has made you know hundred thousand. The next minute, next business, next month, uh, quarter, month or quarter, they've lost say fifty thousand, yeah. and they don't know where they are. They yeah. really have got no idea if they're making money or not. Yes, over a period of say two or three years, they might understand, but generally they don't have a clue. They can't tell you where you're making. Because the other thing is, when you price and you can say, "I'm pricing," "I'm putting this margin," that helps you to see whether that price is right and whether. Um, you're losing money. So say, for instance, you ex you're you expecting a gross profit of 25% mm -hmm. and you get the cutoff wrong, your gross profit could be 20% or could be 30%, say. Sure. 
Yeah. And you're thinking you either done badly or well when you haven't. It's it yeah. might still be 25% because you haven't got the cutoff right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I think you're going to take us through um, some worked examples, Graham. Well, we're going to try and do it. What we'll do is we'd, we'd, I'll just go through what a balance sheet is first. So if we can have the first slide, Linda, what a typical balance sheet looks like. And then I'm going to show you then just one item that we could have as a cutoff issue. So mm -hmm. we'll just try and keep it same, uh, simple. Now, hopefully you can see that because it's obviously if you're on a phone, you probably be struggle. But if you get a laptop or a notebook, desktop, you should be able to. But basically what you've got in a balance sheet is you know three items that usually three or four items that make up the net assets or your value in the balance sheet so you start off with fixed assets fixed assets are things that you've bought that's going to last more than a year and they're generally things like property plant and equipment computers desks chairs um vehicles you can have something called in um uh, sort of this, they, these are tangible you can get your hand on you can have intangible but for this assets but for this I've left that but intangibles include maybe you spent a lot on a, an e-learning platform or you know sort of like a website or you've bought a business with some goodwill so that would be intangible we could keep it simple for the moment mm -hmm. um, so with the fixed assets you portion them over a period of time so you say right I think my car will last 10 years, 10%, or plant is 10 years. And basically a car, maybe they write it off over five years. Mm -hmm. So what happens in the balance sheet, you have got the original costs less and a portion of what you think you use. Now, this, the diff, that amount then goes into the P&L, which we discussed last time. So if, for instance, on the vehicles, which is showing 70, 75, is it? So I can't read yep. it now. Yep. 75,000. And say that was 100,000 you had on vehicles. Depreciation would be 25,000 would have gone through the P&L over either this period or previously. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Depreciation is not corporation tax. It's just an accounting adjustment. It does not affect your tax. Please remember that. Mm -hmm. Then we go into something called current assets, which is things that actually you own or people that owe you. So some things are like stock. Um, so you've got some stock about, then you've got work in progress, which we discussed just now, which is items that you have an invoice that you've done work on. Yep. Um, age receivables or trade debtors. That's people that you've given credit to that haven't paid you by that period, end of period. Mm -hmm. You could have other debtors, loans, retentions, uh, prepayments, maybe, you know, there's 20,000, maybe that's an insurance policy you paid on the 31st of the month and actually it's for the year ahead. So that is prepaid over the next period. Yeah. Um, and then you've obviously got cash at bank, you know. So those two are basically the current assets and fixed assets are assets. They're, they're things that gives value to the business. You you own them, you know, they're, they're value that actually if everything stopped and you could get it, all that money in, you'd have that as cash. Mm -hmm. um, current liabilities are things that's payable in the next year. They're generally things like people that you owe, like age payables, trade uh, trade creditors, accruals. So maybe you've got like an accountancy bill you haven't paid or some other electricity or whatever, and there's uh, you know, bills then. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then you've got taxes, your PAYE, VAT, corporation tax, et cetera. And other creditors, which could be things like director's loan, you know, sort of HPs, um, you know, pensions that you owe, um, you know, through Nest or whatever. Um, I would add that if your director's loan is in current liabilities, fine. The business owes you as a director. Yep. If it goes into current assets, be careful, all right, yep. and talk to your accountant well, because you really, you could, yeah, you could have a tax problem with S455 tax. Yep. But it depends on the value and everything and whether you can repay it, et cetera. Yep. But that's not one for today. <clears throat> so you take the liabilities, um, the current liabilities of the current assets to give you net current assets. If that's positive, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Right. As long as everything's been valued properly, like stock is valued. You know, you've you've actually if you've got some stock that's really should be written off, that's not in there. Then you've got current li uh, long term liabilities or creditors are falling after one year and that's generally things like loans that are actually beyond a year so 
accountants will split it and we have to sorry that's just the way we have to so if you had a five-year loan year one repayments will go into current liabilities the other years will go into long-term liabilities or credits yeah. after more than one year and then you have deferred something like deferred tax which is generally the timing balance because now we have you know sort of up to a million you can have uh, uh you take a hundred a hundred percent of the fixed asset you've bought against corporation tax then because there's still an asset if you sell it there's a potential tax liability later on yeah right we take that off sorry i'm just going on uh, uh, catch a bit yeah. of breath and that leaves you with net assets right that then the net assets would equal your share capital any like um share type premiums you might have or pr other types of shares you could have ordinary preference shares and it's the retain profits which is profits from previous years not the last year mm -hmm. and then your it'll be also adds in the current year profits less the corporation tax for that year and the dividends now that ca those capital and reserves equals the net assets hence why it balances and i'm just looking at the screen graham and i'm not actually sure that our, our figures do what have we done wrong here today oh no uh, i think you've used the wrong slide sorry there there we go <laughs> right see don't try don't trust us as an accountant all right so there you go um so yes it should it, we've yeah i've pulled up the wrong details but yes it should you've, proved, you've pulled up the wrong slide <laughs> well hopefully we've got the, the right figures um on the next part because um well let's try it so then we go through cutoffs so basically that was the current year profits less tax and dividends was eighty five thousand. Right, that is correct. Whatever has happened elsewhere, right? Yeah. So if we go on to the next slide, what's happened, right? And we've got the next slide right, all right. So we actually managed to balance it this time. Um, but there was two changes. So what happened was in this example, there was a large invoice <clears throat> not received. So basically, the uh, the company, the business didn't realize that they hadn't had all the invoices in. They didn't have a good purchase order system or whatever and matching that so they could actually put it into accruals. Mm -hmm. So for some reason, it got miss, missed off. And it was a 200,000 invoice right at the end of the year. Or it might have been someone who's invoiced on the 1st or the 10th of the next month that actually was all the work was done in the previous period. So we've taken it off age payables. That was 300,000 before. Yep. So it shows you've gone down to 100. But on this, what it says here is the current year profits have now gone to 285 because we've missed a major invoice. Now, if you're a business owner and you're thinking, do I pay any more dividends? You know, I'm going to declare dividends in the new year. Am I, you know, can I afford to buy that massive, you know, piece of plant or whatever that's 150,000? If you're looking at this, you'll be saying, no, I, do I need to borrow? Whereas on the other one, you'll be saying, yeah, I need to borrow. Yep. And that is something you've got to be very careful because it gives you wrong financial information. Uh, but it does help to have the right figures up to start with, obviously. Um, yeah. So that's cut off. Cut off can cause you major issues. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, okay. So... Um... How, you know, we know it can cause us big issues, Graham. How do we go about ensuring the accuracy? And I'm going to start off by saying don't do it on a spreadsheet, <laughs> um, uh, which is what we've done today. Uh, but how do people um, maintain the accuracy of cutoff in their financial statements? Well, <clears throat> like I say, when you're small, you probably have got a good handle on it and you'll probably know. But as you get bigger, it gets harder and harder because you're relying on other people, you're relying on your bookkeeper, your accountant, your office manager, whatever. And actually you're hoping that everything goes, like everything comes in right. Um, and you may not have been taught about this, all right? There's a lot of people that haven't been taught. Now, so really you need good, robust accounting processes to establish clear cutoff dates. So I've already said about like the invoice. Well, then... If you had a purchase order system, a PO system, you might have a PO there that's outstanding for 200,000. You realize, well, where's that? So that helps. Having a stock system to count your stock, 
that helps having a deposits understanding what deposits there are and what's still live that helps so it's it's basically having proper processes that you can actually have that's behind the scenes that or within the accounting system that helps you to record the transaction so you and accurately promptly and you can then say at the month end look we've got to make an adjustment here or there because for instance deposits well we've had that we haven't we haven't done the work so we've got to put that as a deposits in advance it doesn't go in as sales it's not a sale yet we haven't accounted for that yeah and then regular reviewing now one of the things we like is that the spots it because everybody makes mistakes everybody can miss things but if you've got regular management accounts and let's say monthly or quarterly or even if you do it annually if you look at the trends so not just this year against next year or uh, last year or you know this month against last month if you've got say if it's monthly say four three four five six months if you've got quarterly again three four five six quarters annual three, four, five years, you can spot trends. Yeah. So if, for instance, you know, your stock's going up, go that way, um, but basically your sales going down, then you've got a problem. Either you're missing something from cut off or you've got stock that's not, your stock is not selling. Um, and that is something that you can rectify. It rectifies not only cut off errors, but it also helps with this matching uh, side to actually see when you've got slow moving stock, Um, you know debtors days are going out you know you're not getting suppliers invoices in on time you know something something doesn't look right so there's and this comes into ratios different ratios that you can have that would help you to understand what actually how your business is um uh performing Mm -hmm. now we could go into there's lots and lots of ratios um but the thing is you have to have the I couldn't do it in a, just one LinkedIn live because there's so many and it can be sector specific. You have different ratios for someone who's like, say, by, you know, a wholesale, distribution, construction, you know, sort of a, a restaurant. You'll have all different types of KPIs. But as a business owner, when you're small to medium, you don't need masses of them. You just need the key. What drives your business? Yeah, absolutely. But the main thing is, it gives you a, a snapshot in time with a trend. If you've got that, it, you can see where things are going and it gives you a feel of what's happening and you cut out the surprises. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah. So, so really it's all about um, get, you know, paying attention to cut off and doing those reviews, Graham, to, to make sure that, you know, everything is in good shape. It is. And it's understanding which items, like I said, you know, certain, certainly you know, like if you're a restaurant, then trade debtors are not really a, shouldn't be a problem, yeah. you know, and you'll be looking more at the stock levels, you know, or your cash levels. And then you'll be looking against, like, say, for instance, you'll be looking at wet and dry. You'll be looking at sales, you know, of your of your food against um, cost and same with um, drink. So you can see the margins and you look at how you're pricing and how's that working. Yeah. It also especially in a cash type business or you know things where you could have you know friends that come for meals you can actually look to see if something's going wrong you know there's something hang on a minute something's gone down and then you realize that you can watch it and watch maybe there's a member of staff that's giving too much out you know so there's different things it just it helps you get control of the business yeah absolutely um graham um thank you for uh, sharing those insights with us today and next time we'll make sure our balance sheet balances um, yeah. so uh but if you know if these are um if, if you'd like to have a conversation with graham about um how to understand your balance sheet and especially how to get the cut off right in your business um i'll pop graham's email up on the screen drop an email chat with graham at westgatescommercial.com and he will set up a complimentary one-to-one session with you um next time we are going to be trying to bring things together for you so we're going to be asking how does your balance sheet p l and cash all linked up and graham's going to do a worked example for you um to hopefully give you a better understanding of how all these different statements work together in your business so um join us on monday the 4th of march at half past 12 we'll look forward to seeing you there Thank and you. I would I would just add what we'll do is actually we'll make sure the damn thing balances. No, <laughs> we absolutely will. 
The but joy... if I actually show you, we're, do, we're going to work through a very simple example, which is like a bookkeeping example with like six, seven, eight, nine, ten points. Mm -hmm. Then we'll show you where they go into like a template. Yep. And we'll show you how the balance sheet, profit and loss and cash links up. And we'll show yep. you why profit's not cash. So it's a very simple but a very interesting example. And it's a really important one because, as you said before, you can't spend profits. Exactly. So, yeah, I think that I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, I hope to see, see you there on the 4th of March. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.